All right, let's get this party started, guys. Real quick for this one, um, hold your questions, guys. And you're going to have a lot of questions. You're probably going to hear a lot of I don't knows. Um, so for those of y'all that have been living under a rock, um, every realtor in the United States got sued <laughs> by some guy, I think, out of Virginia. And he basically, it's an antitrust lawsuit. He got a lot of money. He got a lot of money from it. Uh, NAR backed down and ended up settling out of court over it. They didn't want this whole thing to drag out. Paid something like five hundred million dollars in damages, and well, hang on, five hundred. We paid, yeah, you know, whatever. It's like five hundred million, whatever. And so right now they put a deadline of July first to get all this stuff figured out. And when we say all this stuff, it's it's going to be a little bit weird. And <laughs> right now we don't know what to do. Um, we we really haven't gotten the the nod from NAR or TAR to tell us what's going to happen. More than likely, we're going to see some drastic changes in the contracts, the uh, IABS um, representation agreements. I think all of those are going to change very drastically when it comes to payments. Eric said something very poignant this morning, and I thought it was brilliant. He said, this is the same thing that happened with Dodd-Frank. Um, when Dodd-Frank came out, Eric, Susie, myself, we were doing a bunch of owner finance deals, and all that did was just add 16 speed bumps which cost the client $1,200 and closed, slowed our closing down by 15 days. But it didn't change anything else. It didn't change anything else. It just added speed bumps, slowed it down, and charged the customer more. We both agree that this is the same thing that's going to happen. Buyers are going to end up paying a lot more money out of pocket. Um, I think it's going to squeeze a lot of people buying, uh, especially first-time home buyers. And it, it's just going to be something we got to work through. So we don't have the silver bullet on what you need to do right now. We do not have that right now, but we do have suggestions going forward. Suggestion number one, this is not a time to be lazy with your paperwork, okay? Um, every lawyer in the nation <laughs> is going to try and pin somebody on this. Lawyers don't go after you. They just use you to go after the NO insurance company. Guys, if we get, get keep getting popped and popped and popped and our E&O insurance goes up, that $49 goes away, guys. Transaction fees go up. It's the game. And the only way you're going to get popped is by not taking care of your paperwork. Every lawyer, in the, every ambulance chasing piece of shit lawyer is going to be looking at every single deal. Do not get lazy with your paperwork. Number one, that's an IABS, guys. I think it's going to change. I think it's going to change. It'll probably be two pages when it's all said and done now. You've got to have those, especially if you're representing a buyer. Um, everybody gets lazy. We all do it. Oh, hey, this is my friend at the party. Hey, he wants to go see some house. What are you doing Saturday? I'll go show it to you. You can't do that, folks. You can't. you got to give them an IBS and a buyer's rep agreement. That's the second form you've got to make damn sure you have right now. Folks, it is called a buyer-tenant representation agreement. Don't let that confuse you that it's only for renters. It is for somebody who's buying or somebody that will rent. Okay? It's the same form, both sides. Okay? And make sure you do not leave any blanks on a contract. The only time you can leave a blank is if you don't put the corresponding check mark. Okay? So if you don't check a box and there's blanks underneath it, you can leave those blank. Once you check something, Ben Brown. <gasps> Once you check something, guys, you have to fill out everything sure. in there, every blank spot. Well, Colin, what if I don't want to do something? Put in slash A. Every lawyer is going to be looking at every single contract. There should be zero blank spots, folks. So IABS and a buyer's representation agreement. And the big thing, guys, is in the commission part on the buyer's side, just put 3%. I understand right now we're still advertising houses at two and a half, one and a half, one, whatever. I get it. Four, three plus ten thousand dollars, click whatever. Guys, just put three percent in there for right now. Keep it standard, keep it easy. If you get paid less, just get paid less. If you get paid more, just get paid more. We'll figure it out later. Put three percent. Don't leave anything blank. Eric, your comments. Um, what we talked about earlier was if everyone would go print and look at a commercial contract section 9b look at how the commission is done on that that's what i think this will end up looking like um there like if you go to craigsey or loopnet and you're dealing with commercial they don't advertise 
any commissions for the buyer's agent. It's when you submit the offer that it has this big section that spells out what your commission's gonna be, who's gonna pay it, when it's due, how it's due. And I think it's gonna end up kind of mirroring that. So that'll be a good thing for y'all to look at and get an understanding with, because that's probably where we're gonna end up at. So commercial contract, take a look at that. Uh, that's y'all's homework for today. Um, I got a feeling that the one to four is going to get amended to something along those lines. The one to four is going to have, it's going to add another page guys. And as soon as we figure more of this out, we'll, we'll let you know. And I, we all have speculation. We've heard this, we, Eric on the first meeting, we, we heard the, this lawsuit coming in in two different ways. Once we talked about it in a minute, we realized that's one side of it. And this is the other side. It was a complex lawsuit guys. So the, for the ones that just showed up, the, the reason that they're, they're going to be taking away the commission advertisement on the MLS is because of like steering, right? As an agent, you may not show this house to your client because they're offering 3% where this other one's offering 2% or whatever. So they want to get rid of all that to make it an equal playing field. We all know that's, you know, it doesn't matter, right? Like, I mean, I'm sure there's some agents out there that do it, but most buyers are finding their properties outside the MLS on Zillow or whatever. And they're going to call you and say, hey, I want to see this house. Um, but that's the reason for doing that. And then the other side is, like Colin says, the antitrust side. Um, and I'm sure there's more aspects to it, but that's that's the reason that they're not wanting to uh, advertise commissions, which is like commercial. You know, so, Hey, guys, and just be careful with your paperwork. That's the big thing right now. As we get closer to July, as we talk to the lawyers, as we get it all figured out, as TAR starts pushing things down the pipeline, we will let you know. We'll translate it into white line ease because um, I, I realize it's going to affect the way we buy and sell investment properties, wholesale deals. All of that stuff's going to be affected. So, again, uh, somebody asked earlier, um, if you're doing wholesaling, guys, yes, you need an IABS. You need an IABS signed by both sides. Well, the uh, exhibit alpha, I think, covers. I, I still, still an IABS still too. IBS. You still need an IABS and the exhibit alpha signed by both sides. Um, guys, just you cannot be lazy on your paperwork right now. One lazy move could run you out of this business. It's now is not the time to mess around with that. Yeah, um, everyone's going to be looking at it. I, I, I know this sounds ugly, but it's going to knock a lot of people out of real estate. It really is, and don't be one of them. Don't be one of them. Yeah, uh, one, one big, one big mess up in a lawsuit could end a lot of people. And every lawyer is licking their chops right now. They're waiting for July first. I, I watched this. The courts are going to get flooded. It was the same thing. Y'all remember when the ADA came out about the websites and they hit all the realtors for that? Oh, something like two thousand realtors got sued because their ADA, their websites weren't ADA. There wasn't the click to talk to speech button. Some lawyer found it, figured out realtors were all using this one IDX server and just found every one of them and just nailed them. Everybody settled out, settled out of court. I mean, he made millions. That, that same thing is going to happen, guys. Same thing's going to happen. Two more, two more housekeeping items. Housekeeping item number one. <laughs> Susie's found a lot of commission disbursement agreements that have not been signed by Susie. Now, A, number one, those title companies suck. We're going to talk to them. Number two, guys, to me, that is a terminable offense. Like, drop, guys, you cannot do that. The bookkeeping on our end is a pain in the ass. We got the 1099s, all that stuff. It's hard to do. And we don't need you making it harder by having just random numbers out there. And as soon as money is paid and commissions are out and about, that's when you get sued. And if your numbers are wrong on that CDA and nobody signed it on our end, that's your ass. Get us involved. Have us sign it. Let us check it. Do not send it to your title company. I get it. Man, we close tomorrow morning. We just did the thing. Uh, uh, don't care. You don't have to have your CDA for closing. <laughs> we'll get it to you in a couple days if we have to. You can wait. That's your fault. Sorry. You can wait two days. Guys, I know most brokers will hold checks for a month. If you need to wait two days, it'll be okay. Just get your paperwork on time. You can't mess around with that CDA either, guys. That's a big one. And last but not least, Susie, you want to do the disclosures? Um, the disclosure? Yeah. 
Yeah, the seller's disclosure. I've been noticing a lot of agents still using the old form. Do not use the old form. I have uploaded the updated and I labeled it updated, updated seller's disclosure form in dot loop. So please make sure I have um, sent back a few of them. So please make sure you use the updated one. It is very important because there's two um, new items that they posted on there. So please make sure you get the new one. Folks, I use Seller Shield. Sellershield.com. I love it. That it keeps the forms updated. It tracks it for it. Tells me when it's done, and it sends them the lead-based paint addendum if they put in a year that's older than whatever that is. Seventy-eight, seventy-six. What I can't remember. It's seventy-eight. It's seventy-eight. Yeah. yeah. It's 78. I can never. I know it's one of those. It's in there somewhere. Man, how many realtors did it take to get that? <laughs> <laughs> to get lead -based paint addendum. Um, yeah, I, I, that's what I use or use that. If you've got a stack of them printed out or you've got one saved on your desktop that you're sending to everybody, you're sending the wrong one. I'm going to say this again. Every lawyer in the country will start reviewing every piece of paper you send out. And trust, they will go around their ambulance chasers. Hey, did you just buy a house? Can I see your paperwork? Hey, did you just do this? Oh, if you're talking at a dinner party, hey, send me your contract. Let me review it for you. Guys, they're going to be doing this. I, I promise you. It's like when somebody crashes. There's blood in the water, guys. It's emergency room. Did you see them walking through? Oh, yeah. It's, there's blood in the water, guys. <laughs> hey, my buddy got in a wreck, and he got hit up. He said he was getting blown up the same day from attorneys. They are the literally ambulance yeah. chasers. Yeah. Guys, and they're, they're going to come after you. The real estate ones are going to be, hey, man, let me see your contract. Let me see this. Hey, I saw this house went pending. They're going to go talk to the buyer. Who, who brokers you work with? Mm. Let me see it. And guys, and for those of y'all that do wholesaling, you know you walk a gray line. Very fine line. That's why you I'm walk a gray this. line, guys. And if they're gonna start looking at everything, they're gonna start to see your paperwork. Most of the time, wholesalers, we just kind of flew under the radar. Nobody was really checking us out. Every time a house moves, they're gonna know now. Every time, guys, it's in the cat. <laughs> I can tell you every brand new house that just got moved and then go ask them, hey, can I see your paperwork? I might be able to make you a couple grand. Yeah, change of ownership. Any change of ownership. Guys, paperwork, paperwork, paperwork. It sucks. I hate it. The reason why I'm good at it is because I hate it. And and one thing I do want to bring up on paperwork, I am I do look at all the paperwork, but when you do close, do not archive your file. Because I cannot go back well, if, fix that. if for some reason, for right now, if for some reason um, there is a lawsuit, uh, we had one and it was archived. I couldn't go back in and check the file yeah, for, yeah. for a form that, that they were missing. So please don't archive it. Keep it unarchived until the end of the year. Because that's, that's how I'm able to look at all the paperwork and keep it on, on our end. Right. So please do that. Eric just said we're in two lawsuits right now. One of them, guys, our agent it is getting sued over something stupid. I'm not even going to bring it up. I'm not even going to talk about the agent. But, guys, um, we 100% we we have his back because he did what he was supposed to do. Um, but it, that doesn't stop us from getting sued. And when we get sued, it costs money, a lot of money, like 5000 per person just to get an attorney on retainer. By the way, there's 93 white line agents. <laughs> and we pay the, the deductible. Yeah. The 5,000. You pay the deductible. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. So but, listen, but, but here's the deal. If you get sued, we also get sued. Yeah. So even though you pay your deductible, your E&O. No, I meant like yours. Yeah, like we still have to pay our. Oh, so yeah. it costs so two us. Oh, two deductibles yeah. for the E&O. You know, because an attorney is going to sue you and the brokerage. So you cover yours, but we still have to pay five thousand too. So if we had three agents get sued, it costs us fifteen grand. How many three hundred dollar transaction fees does it take to cover fifteen thousand? A lot, a lot. So that's the the flip side to being a low cost trans transaction brokerage is we can't afford. But if you want to stay low cost, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do your paperwork correctly. I mean, you know, we're already looking at it, going, all right, like, yeah. you know. How low cost can we actually be and, and be in business? Like, you know, do we need to move this or change this? Because, a man, a couple of these can wipe out 10 transactions, 15 transactions that are gone, like a whole month of transactions just for one attorney. Even if that, even if that attorney just goes, 
yep, you're all correct. You're good. We're going to send a letter over. It's gone. Thanks for the five grand. Are you guys making this a requirement for every white line? What? This conversation. Well, we, uh, I am when we're done. Okay. When, when I have the finals, this will be. Hey, guys, by the way, that is. I, I'm working on a new website. I was supposed to show them today. We got sideways. But the new website that's going to have, it's going to have a white line portal that you're going to be able to go into, log in. Um, it's not going to be for your transactions. It's going to be more for documents, training, things of that nature, uh, logos, whatever it is. But when you log in there, there's going to be courses that you're going to have to complete before you get paid again. And this is going to be one of them once we have all the rules. Guys, I'm not going to make it a 40-hour course. It's going to be just the nuts and bolts. But I need to know that you heard me. Uh, so please don't give me flack when I send that down the pipeline. I need to make sure that you heard me because that's going to help us on the legal thing too. Did you tell them? Yes, I did. And they watched this video, right? Um, I think we should start, we should pick it. We should all sit out in front of the office in front of Colin's house with like picket signs. Like, We're not going to watch the video. Do it. <laughs> it's fine by me. No, I, another thing is um, I just took the broker responsibility course. Oh, that's scary. It is scary. And they, <laughs> They're suing some agents because they don't have the information about broker services and the consumer um, disclosure on your email. Any email that you send out has to have that. If you don't have the that, consumer protection notice. Yes, you have to have that on your emails yes. too. I get them to sign one. I have it. I make them sign. I make them sign one to me. So it's in the signature. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you have to make sure if you're a newbie and you're starting on the email, you need to have that on your email. Um, if you're practicing on Instagram, Facebook, if you're advertising, that has to be on your, your site as well. Um, like Colin said, these attorneys are suing everybody right now. So they want to go after anybody who, who's doing that. So if you're utilizing your social media for, for real estate, make sure you have your information on there. I did not know that. Yeah. So I, I think what most agents on their uh, business page is pinning it on the top of the page. Sure. I, I don't know on my website, but I don't have any email signature. Yeah, or highlights. You can put a highlight, you can put it like a link tree, as long as it links to it. I'm it's going to be a direct what link. Is a direct link. link. Yeah. Well, yeah. To be. Um, I remember oh, by the way, guys, the way to do one click, in my opinion, you might have better ways to do it. <laughs> like, no, literally, I just Google Trek Consumer Protection Notice. And I click the link and it's trek.texas.gov slash site site blah, 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 blah. Copy that. And then just you, when you oh, highlight your word, highlight the word, right click, it'll say add hyperlink and just have it linked directly to that. So now if that link's broken, Banner Brown, if that link is broken, it's not your fault. It's Trek's fault. Okay. So link it. Just go to Trek. Just Google Trek Consumer Protection Notice. That's all I'm doing. You can change what it says, like link. And what if you're practicing business and you have like uh, a YouTube page? So it's really still, still has to be something yeah. in there. Okay. But it, yeah, and you're a little screwed. Also on your website. Yeah. Jeez. On your website. You yeah, website. and, and if you have your own company, you still have to have white line on there. So, okay. So, hey, anyone else here using Linktree? I have a um, you need to add it. Do you do that in there too? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I use Linktree. Everywhere. Put it everywhere. I got a section says notices and I have my IBS in the consumer protection notice there. But that's two clicks. So do you need to eliminate the one click? One click. Well, if it's I have them in my email signature also. Yeah. But if you have like a um like on my card has a and the email like has a QR code, code you scan it and it's on there. So link tree is almost the same thing. Like if you yeah, have I got new cards guys, and I have a yes. link tree QR code. Yeah. Yeah. As long don't, as it's on there. Don't be lazy. I literally just changed my signature, added the consumer protection notice that took me what? A minute and a half? Don't be lazy. That's how you get sued. Everybody do it right now. I see everybody just staring at me. If you're looking at a computer, start doing it. Because I didn't know I was supposed to do that. Put it on your YouTube channel. Okay, right now. Oh, and also just a reminder, a lot of us have email signatures that are separate if they if we send from our iPhone, so you gotta figure that out too. Oh yeah. Yes. All of them. Oh, my iPhone, like it won't send it from my phone, but it'll send it from a computer. Oh, you're talking about the signature of the uploading. Actually, get it tatted like right here on your neck. That's a QR code. Like, QR. Yeah, QR code. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're a realtor? You know, yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> the longest headshot ever. So. Oh, <laughs> if you guys aren't, haven't invested 
me and Vanessa got dot Phantom, bro. cards, uh, the pants, bro. so we can scan our information to everyone just by the cell phone. And if that doesn't work, there's a QR code on the back. You're so bougie. Uh, <laughs> did you have a light one as well? Yeah, yesterday? Yeah. I just like it like true. Yeah. So you just like walk around like, oh my god. <laughs> Hey, so hey, if you do that to me, I'm gonna kiss your hand. Are, are you just like rubbing your wrist against right. people's butts? Like they're fooling us in there. Hey, I got my number. Let me get my number. Stop it. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions concerning Vanessa? Because we have little squirrels here. Yeah. Yeah. I gotta go. Any questions? No questions. No questions. Did we want to go over to what we're? Oh, do you want to tell them the surprise? Oh, no. <laughs> we got something better than Dot Loop coming really soon. It's going to freaking be a game changer. It's so much easier. And I think everyone's going to absolutely love it. You're going to hate the part of trans transferring, but we're working on making that easy. But and I'll take care of the transferring. The, the ease of this versus Dot Loop and just the amount of errors that happen in Dot Loop. Um, Things not integrating with MLS like this integrates and pulls data and oh my god it's and the guys from Texas that created this new software. So transfer all the hey guys, y'all know when like Dot Loop right now when you go and fill up all that information and you hit autofill and it only fills in about half of it. Mm -hmm. This removes that problem. It removes that problem. It, it allows calendar. Have you ever done a contract in the wrong form? Like you get about halfway through your. <laughs> Commercial form, and you realize you need, or you run to four, and you realize you need farm and ranch. It automatically migrates all that. If you say change the contract, it takes all that data and puts it in the new yes. one. And instead of actually looking at a contract and having to like zoom in and find all the little blanks, it doesn't even show you a contract. It just has like questionnaire that you fill out, and it auto populates all the documents. So you don't have to go and pull up the next one and zoom in and pull up the next one and zoom in. Oh crap, I missed this box. Where's that damn seven day option area? Oh, there and, it, and it'll let you, it'll alert you if you're missing something. Yeah. So you can't move forward if, if you're still missing something. And if you get That's multiple great. offers, it'll show them like side by side by yeah. side by side and allow you just to the data, not the contracts, yeah, just, just the, the data, data and it gives you a net number. That's so yeah. It goes, oh, that was a million dollar house. You want to pay for this? You want to pay for this? That's the net number, and it just lists them all out. And it'll track all the the commissions. So, like, instead of Susie having to put everything in a spreadsheet, like if if Hillary's like, hey, where am I at right now? Like, we can click a button, and it'll it'll show exactly how many transactions Hillary's done. And this is going to be so much better for me, guys. <laughs> just <laughs> just I, I, you're really going to like it. Susie's already excited. So, like, drop, yeah. just, like, drop the like. Um, All right. Any questions, guys, about NAR? I know it's not a whole lot of information, but I did want to give just to hopefully make y'all feel a little bit better because we don't know either. Um, uh, we're still waiting. Just, just get real, real particular about your paperwork. That's my advice right now. Well, I do have a question. Um, yes, so. So what you're saying right now, we're not supposed to put a commission under the buyer's agency compensation on MLS, correct? Well, as of right now, you still can't. Yeah. July 1st. As of July 1st, that will change. So as of right now, nothing has officially changed. Okay. So what you're recommending us later to do is, is this. So we put 3% and then say our seller is only offering two and a half percent. So we're still going to put 3% there and not notify them to the end. I'm confused on that. Well, no, as of right now, just make sure you have a buyer's rep and put 3% in there because you cannot predict every single commission structure that you're going to see. I think she's asking about the listing side. First. On the listing side? Right. On the list. Are you talking about the listing side? Yes. On the listing side, I'd still put 6% until July 1st, until we tell you otherwise. Or legally, whatever's whatever negotiated. What, legally, whatever's negotiated. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. More correctly. Sorry. Keep, just proceed as normal right now. Okay. If you have buyer clients, you need to talk to them about that, that we're not real sure what's going to happen when July comes. Your listing clients, I don't think anything's going to change with that. I don't think. I could be wrong. But... Your buyer clients, you need to have a conversation with, even if you're talking to them right now. Yeah. Even if you're in the middle of a contract that's supposed to close April 15th, I would still have a conversation with them. Um, just let them know, hey, some weird stuff's going down. They're shaking and rattling this. I don't think it's going to affect this transaction, but I need you to know 
I may come back to you with some crazy paperwork. Um, just be ready for it. What do you mean crazy paperwork? I don't even know right now. I mean, my broker doesn't even know right now. The lawyers don't know right now. I'm just letting you know that lawsuit really is going to affect a lot of stuff. And I just want you to know. Proceed business as usual. As we get more information, I'll let you know. We're just trying to be a little bit proactive here because I know it's scary um, because I know we're screwing with your commission. Especially if you're new, you're probably working with a lot of buyers. Um, it's scary. And don't worry, we're this is not something we're taking lightly. I've read a lot on this. I've been to a lot of webinars. I've been to a lot of this and a lot of that. And basically the answer is we don't know yet. <laughs> so I just digested it for you and spent 30 minutes instead of the two hour zone. Okay. So yeah, yeah that, absolutely. And I, I, I appreciate it. I know it's I know it's not much to go on. <laughs> I know it's frustrating. I'm frustrated. I don't like not knowing. Um so but hurry up and wait. That's, that's the answer I keep giving. Yeah, also, cool. Any other questions? Great question. I yeah, if you ever have any questions, please reach out to us. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Got, a I got a question. Yeah. What's up, Joyce? So I know you don't know right now, but your best suggestion, I know you talked about getting a buyer's rep for residential. I mean, on the wholesale side, we're not representing really any of these buyers. I mean, your exhibit alpha states that. Yeah. But your exhibit we, alpha states that we're not representing anybody in this transaction. So I thought the alpha was just for sellers when we're working off market. Just but you wouldn't. Uh, no, I, I, you wouldn't. I, sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead, Hillary. I like your answer. I, know I was just going to say, in a in a wholesale transaction, you don't need a buyer's rep agreement because you're not representing anybody on any side. You just need yeah, your IMBS on both sides and the yeah. exhibit alpha. But what I, I thought the alpha was just for sellers off market to disclose what we're doing with the property. No, there's also a section in there that indemnifies you. It says, I, Julius, am not am a licensed agent, but I am not representing you. It, okay. That's the last paragraph of it. Okay. So the buyers and yeah, yeah. I, I, I would suggest having the buyers and, and the sellers you're sign doing, that. You're doing it right. You have it signed and everything, but now we're really pushing it for you to have it on both sides. And they can sign the same one. Okay. And yeah, like I, I said. Is, I, go ahead. I'd push it, I'd push it over with the, uh, with the assignment. I'd be the last page of my assignment. No. And then what Eric was saying too, was um, not for wholesaling, but for, if you have, I guess when this changes and they decide what the hell they're really going to do, Eric said, have the, that representation. I don't represent the buyer. If they're going to, if they choose to be a representative, if they choose not to have an agent at that if you're point, a agent, yeah. if you're a listing agent, how yeah, do there's, that? There's a, there's a, Tar's going to have to get down with us on this one. What, what Melissa is telling you is that ethically, if you are engaged with a client and you, so now we can't advertise, well, that's the rumor, right? Come July 1st, you cannot put 3%, but you cannot advertise commission in the MLS, which means you're either going to have to call or do whatever it is. If you engage with a client, you go look at 15 houses, they pick the 15th house, you didn't know that three months ago, that that 15th house is actually offering 0% commission. So your buyer's agreement states that the buyer will pay you the 3%. That's what it currently states. Okay. Now you need to explain that to your buyers very real right now, because that's what's going to change. Now, if the buyer says, well, I can't afford to pay you. And the seller's like, I'm not paying you you are still ethically obligated to continue with that client for zero commission. I, possibly. <laughs> Hillary say possibly. possibly. That's, the, you know, that right there is, you know, that's another. We need to clarify that though, because ENO yeah. will not cover you. If after you close the deal and then you get sued, ENO is like, I'm not covering you. But they, I don't, I don't think you can be sued if you didn't get paid. Yeah. So you, you did not have to find your documentation. And what if, for whatever reason, you must. I think you just have to hold it. Yeah. I think you have to hold it. So if you make eight, you'll come up with a form. I get zero on the commission. I think that's. I, so then we'll no, I think you can still get sued, but I don't think your E and O insurance isn't going to kick in. There's a lot of stuff that doesn't kick in, and there's there are certain things that they can sue you for and can't sue. You. So so I heard the story like I think it was a video on it that you're going to see a lot more buyers agents offer. Let's call it. It's two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, but my buyer's offering you two sixty. 
but I'm asking for ten thousand in seller's commission. Yeah, it's, concessions back. It's probably the concessions are probably what's going to be paid. And, and it's going to take a bigger thing on concessions, but I'm. Mean, it, but it's gonna, place, it, right? but I have yes. I have a that's, that's what we need to wait for NAR. What what Chris is suggesting is we overprice it, get concessions back to pay ourselves. You're gonna run into appraisal problems if you do that. Yeah, you're gonna have appraisal okay? issues. You're gonna have appraisal issues. I have a feeling something like that's gonna end up being in the contract. Um, I have a feeling that generally NAR is going to tell us like, hey, remember we all used to do six percent, give the other guy three. This is going to be our general platform now that's compliant with these new rules. I have a feeling they're going to say that. Well, well the problem also is that now, now we're selling, let's call it a million dollar listing. Now we've got to ask for what, 30000 extra? So now it's changing not just commission, right? You know, the market, but the market is changing completely because of what we're... What and then the market. appraisers are going to fight us on it. And yes. it's, going to, it, it's going to get... Guys, the, we can speculate and chase rabbits down every hole and, and just get scared and frustrated. Or we can just wait. I I, I 100 subscribe to what Eric said at the first meeting. Is that all this is going to do is just add speed bumps. We're going to end up with like two additional addendum that we're going to have to put into the contract that explain the commission structure, and then we're going to end in the same place. If it's going to screw anybody, it's going to screw the buyers and the people that aren't paying attention. The realtors that aren't paying attention, you're going to get screwed. And then it comes, it's going to screw it the comes down. It really just comes down to communicating. Like we just need to get on the phone with the listing yes. agent. And talk a lot more and work better together. And and Eric suggested that we're going to come up with like a shorthand code in the, in the agent remarks. Like, oh, yes, please verify room sizes in J725 star. I thought they take pictures and your list is 2%, 3%, 4%. There's two messages on there. And what? Oh, can somebody click the messages? I, what I was saying, I'm calling was it was. You know, if a buyer comes to a listing agent unrepresented, we are not a dual agency state. So you, the listing agent needs to have that buyer sign. If they refuse to hire an agent and they yeah. have, you but, need to cover, I'm going to cover myself and have them sign something saying, I do not represent guys, you, you represent yourself. Guys, if you have anybody refusing Sorry. representation, your first thing should be calling me. Okay, she, she's going down a rabbit hole. No, that's what Eric put in the yeah. group the other day. Yeah, a guy just, if so you got somebody who doesn't want to be represented, call me. <laughs> and I'm probably going to tell you have them fill out the exhibit alpha because that indemnifies you. Um, but it's probably going to screw with your paycheck, which is what we got to well, talk about. Well, the exhibit alpha says that you're not representing any party to the transaction. Right. Yeah, right. But if you're representing the seller, then I'm not really have them sign the exhibit alpha. Oh, on a, like a intermediary thing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but we're, that's a whole rabbit hole. I'm not going to go. Yeah. So I watched the NAR update. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. So I watched the NAR update that they that the legal counsel put out a few days ago, or maybe it was on Friday. And really the only rule that they said was you can't advertise the commission in the MLS, but you can advertise the commission on your own website for your own listings. So I think there's going to be a lot of options on how we can still advertise the commission it just won't be on the mls so yeah. um that's just something i found interesting but they're like the, the legal counsel says yes you can still advertise the commission just it's not in the mls so i think um there's probably going to be some other ways that we come up with how you can go to that listing agent's website and be like oh well, let me see what their commission is um so i imagine there's going to be some probably more software out there or some other tools that well, I, it, that's that would seem like an easy fix to me. Like, you still leave the data input in the MLS where I got to punch it in, but just block it from their website, but push it out to Zillow, right? I, you know what I mean? Allow that to work. I, I again, like to Matt's point, there will be some workaround, and it's going to add some weird speed bumps. It'll all work out, but you got to pay attention because there's vultures out right now that are coming. Bianca. Okay. I signed somebody for a listing. I explained how the agency works. I'm representing you as a seller. Somebody else is going to represent the, the, the buyer and so on. The sales price commission of the transaction is a 6%. And that's the sales price, regardless if this comes with an agent or not. Right. Says, why is 6%? This is the standard. Yeah, yeah. It says, look, and I told this to everybody. To make money, you need to pay money. So it's gonna cost you this much, and this is the reason why. So 
normally splits in half, 3% and 3%, and we offer because we want those agents to bring their buyers and see your house and make them best offer. So I explain all that because like it's a business transaction. You're selling your house, it's a business. We're doing a business for the next 30 days. I mean, it's past the whole thing. And when you put it in perspective of the numbers and what they need to do, what we need to do and all the stuff, oh, they're happy to pay for it. And they're willing to do so. But I think it's because of how, as a listing agent, you explain to your client how the whole thing works. Yeah, we're gonna, when we come out, um, Bianca was saying kind of how she explains it to her. If y'all couldn't hear, because she doesn't talk as loud as I do. Um, but yes, once we get the information, we will give you best practices, ways to phrase things. I will probably call in a lot of people. I'll probably call in you guys to, hey, how would you say this? How would you phrase this? Um, and probably just get some practice in because, like, you know how it is. You, you say the same thing over and over and over and over and over again. And now we got to change it. So we need to practice. We need to come up with some new ways to. I think that's a doing. good idea. I think that's yeah. a good idea. There's a lot of um, agents putting their input on social media, which are hurting, which is hurting us, I feel like, um, because they're going and now like consumers are listening. And I think even Susie, right on your listing, the guy had brought up like now I don't have to pay the buyer's agent. Yeah, um, and, and so just enough, I like he canceled. He, he made me terminate it because he didn't want to have the listing on and then this changes because he does not want to pay a commission. He doesn't want to pay a buyer's yeah. agent. Yeah, and that's going to happen. Yeah, that yeah. one that you had. And if you're working with a client that thinks they can do your job, then let them do their your job. Yeah. Find the ones that need your representation. Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. Yeah. yeah I gotta, I, 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 there's so many agents yeah. putting Chris, in information guys, and it's just. This is the guys, listen, hey, on. listen. It, do not. <laughs> post in your personal Facebook, your realtor page, don't post a thing about this. If you have posted something, go delete it. Yeah. You you don't know what you're talking about. Nobody knows what they're talking about. And that can come back and bite you in the ass. Yeah. Especially like, you're going to be a listing. I'm like, you're a listing agent right now. But I mean, in some cases, I mean, I know that there are some people that just do listings, but at some point you were a buyer's agent. So why are you even like speaking on yeah, that? Yeah, guys, yeah. just don't don't talk to it. Don't you blame blame me, blame Eric. But my brokers don't even know, and I I don't even I'm not going to talk about it. Which is a, an acceptable answer. Just say I know it's yeah. going to be weird. It has to do something with commissions, the structure, way we get paid. I think the general clientele would be fine. I don't think it's really going to affect you. Um, well, well, let me let me. We need more answers. We just don't have it. And if you're out there acting like you know something. If you're in these groups, <laughs> I, I agree with Colin. Go and delete the stuff if you have put it on there. Um, I think it's just going to hurt you in the long run. So, yeah. And, and as far as seller concessions on the lending side, there's a max. Like we can't ask for more than six percent on FHA. You can't ask for more than six percent. I mean, four percent on VA. So there's a max in seller concessions. If it does come down to where the buyer has to pay our commissions. It's going to come but out of their money regardless. What I what I was thinking, Priscilla, is I'm wondering if like FHA is going to change the way their program structured. Like it's only one and a half percent down, but then we're going to end up with more people with no equity in their house, and it's it. it, 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 it a lot I, of things buyer, are going to have to change. Yeah. Buyer, yeah, a lot of things are going to change, and or they're going to find a simple workaround. You know, so don't panic. Keep doing what you're doing. Just get really good at your paperwork. I think we're going to get really good at this. Right, because we need to help and think about the next stage. Because we've all been on the other side. Well, everybody. Now. I mean, we've all yeah. loved listings forever. Yeah, we all love the listing. I think as a listing, you just gotta get better. At, hey, this is a business. We're expecting a professional to bring in buyers. Right. Well, let me ask you this: If we're still listing as a six percent, and the buy and the seller is not paying the buyer's commission, the six percent stays the work. Were you keeping the whole six percent? Well, that is no. what it's about. Well, on, well, your, on your listing agreement, it says that you you're going to split it, split it half. That's really, I don't know if that's going to change or what, but because it specifies. You know. how, how is a listing that we put up going to be viewed if they don't have representation and we put a Supra? They need you a listing agent. You, you know? <laughs> and now I represent both sides? No, well, that's, that's what I was talking that's about. That's really talk to them and yeah. see if they want to but, represent or not. Guys, and like, guys, don't like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna caution everybody because there's a lot of smart people in here. Don't 
don't get stuck in a what if <laughs> circle, okay? When I taught, I used to have a question. There's no, I used to have a rule. There's no what if questions in my classroom because what if questions spar this weird thinking, you know, and don't say what happens if. <laughs> what happens if? <laughs> Nobody knows what happens if. Okay, so and you can speculate and drive yourself crazy. This is what my wife does. She runs down every possible bad situation. I'm like, you don't have enough data. You cannot possibly assume this big of a jump without the data in between. And we don't have all the data. Um, we can talk to our lawyers all you want. You can sit there and talk to Tyler Epps. You can call your lawyer and say, tell me what this means. It doesn't mean shit if TAR doesn't produce that form. <laughs> Whatever TAR says goes. Right, because that's who we ultimately report to. Trek, sorry, excuse me, Trek. Whatever Trek says goes. So we got to wait for Trek. That's what we're waiting for. That's good. So don't what if yourself to death. It'll just make you scared. Your veins. All right, I love y'all. I gotta go too. Y'all.